Hello again and welcome to this week's edition of Faster Than World Podcast. I am Jake. This is the amazing Fritz. How are you doing this week, Fritz? I feel fantastic. How are you this week? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It was a good, good show. Good show. What'd you think? Uh, solid show. Solid show. I, I imagine if you looked at the bill of uh, who was on the show, you may not have been excited about it, but a uh, solid show. Worth watching for sure. Exactly. Exactly. Um... Yeah, I haven't been watching much wrestling this week, so maybe I'd have a different uh, take on it. This is like um, you know fresh in my mind. I think this is the first show I watched all week. I was so busy good, with the good choice. school and whatnot. Um, but yeah, we we started out with uh, the recap of the uh, Kevin Owens beatdowns on everybody. Yeah, showed him beating down Sami Zayn, showed him beating down uh, Aaron Neville, uh, and then into Alex Riley. And now picking on that on poor little uh, commentating Alex Riley. <laughs> And then he goes into Regal and Alex in the back, and Alex wants a match, uh, pretty much, and he says you can't be a commentator and a wrestler. Yeah, uh, Regal gives Riley a choice. You either get to be a competitor or a commentator. Full-time of one, can't be part-time on both. Yeah, this is true, this is true. So uh, maybe we'll see that coming up in the next few weeks. And then we go into the ring with, uh, starts out with Adam Rose coming out, which is, you know, main event. Adam Rose with the Rosebuds. Yeah, main event uh, roster talent coming uh, back to NXT versus uh, Tyler Breeze. Coming in as a face. Yeah. Now, he's a heel on the main roster. On NXT, back to being a face, does the uh, trust fall again. Won't won't do it on uh, any of your main main shows, but back to being a face against Tyler Breeze. And then uh, it was a uh, short, uh, not that good match. Uh, never really got going, it seemed like. A uh, very awkward kind of a comedy match to start with, but a very awkward. It was a match where nobody was getting the jokes, I guess. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. A short match, Tyler wins with the beauty shot. Yeah. And then uh, waves off the rosebuds with the uh, selfie stick. <laughs> this gentleman, we go back to... Uh Enzo Amore, Kaz, and uh, Carmella. The Staten Island Strike Force. It was very hilarious. They call uh, uh, Wesley Blake a frosted flake, which is pretty funny. I love, you know. Kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Enzo is always dazzling on the mic. And uh, we go to uh, Alexa Bliss uh, with a okay, very bland promo about the main event. Man. Yeah, explain, explaining where she was, uh, even though she hasn't really been regular at all. Uh, I think she's made a total of three appearances on NXT prior to this. And then uh, putting over her excitement about the uh, ladies' championship match later in the evening. So uh, getting her back on camera, um, setting her up to come out, I guess, in the next couple weeks. We'll see her wrestle. This is true. And then uh, Blake and Murphy, the uh, NXT Tag Champs, come out to a not announced only until commentary, uh, uh, Darkins and Fuller. Yeah, Angela Dawkins and Sawyer Fulton. Uh, wearing matching college style singlets. Yes, yes. Uh, you couldn't really see how well uh, they were as wrestlers, but uh, there were some good uh, double team moves by Blake and Murphy. They did the double leapfrog into the double uh, back elbow, and then mm-hmm. he did like a big, uh, I forget which one, did a gigantic suplex into a gigantic uh, frog splash. So it was kind of awesome to see them uh, show how well they can do very common moves real well. Yeah, yeah, it was Murphy with the uh, running suplex and then Blake hitting a long distance uh, frog splash at an awkward angle. Yeah, pretty pretty awesome. Pretty yeah, awesome. But hitting, it, hitting it strong. And then they uh, just shot, they go to the back where Charlotte's talking to Bailey and Bailey tells Charlotte that she's going to be out there tonight and Charlotte leaves to go get ready and then Emma comes up uh, pretty bitter about uh, having to be back in NXT just kind of uh, kind of teasing that she's turning heel a bit I guess yeah. or maybe turning heel at NXT only but yeah kind of weird kind of weird but uh, yeah we get to see uh, I guess all the ladies it's building up the uh, ladies title match later in the evening because we get to see all, just about all the ladies on the roster this evening even if they're not in the ring yeah. Everybody except for old blue pants. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Uh, uh, and then we go to the same uh, Rhino promo as last week. Good, good to show vignettes of when he was, you know, doing stuff like tearing down the. Uh, yeah, the Goran down. Jericho, Goran uh, Angle, The Rock, Goran Angle, Goran everybody. Gore, Gore, Gore. Get him, Rhino. <laughs> yeah. Then go back to uh, Baron Corbin in the ring versus uh, Tony Briggs, another and, uh, unannounced talent. This is true. And then, like, uh, Baron, it was just your basic Baron Corbin match, but the real story was uh, Owens was behind Alex Riley the whole time. Yeah, he joined. He, he didn't really join the commentary team. He just appeared like the Batman, yeah, like me suddenly me. behind Alex Riley. Me mugging Riley, not saying anything during the match. Uh, of course, uh, Corbin wins quickly <laughs> with his uh, end of days shot and, uh, and lights flash, and then the uh, camera cuts back to the announce team where Owens... Uh, is still looming over Riley, um, Albert, and uh, Alex. Or, uh, 
uh, Rich Brennan still trying to talk Riley down, saying, you know, don't forget about your career. Don't forget what Regal said. You got to make your choice. Don't throw this away. Don't let him make the choice for you. Until Owens uh, <laughs> reaches over and uh, takes Alex Riley's water. Truly, the biggest affront you could commit to a commentator to For steal sure. their water. He could get and parched. It's true. It's true. You don't want him uh, coughing on air. It's not. <laughs> it's not professional. Um, then takes a sip of the water, then dumps it on Riley's head. The last straw, <laughs> almost, because Riley stands up. Albert quickly pulls him back. I mean, you take the man's water, you could get parched, and then you mess up his nice gel job. I'd be pissed, too. That's like fighting words, especially for, you know, a commentator, you know, like Alex Riley. Um, I haven't really seen Alex Riley. A high-level elite commentator like (laughs) Alex Riley. I haven't seen Alex Riley wrestle in, like, a number of years. I don't know how well he's going to do if this, you know, I I think this is definitely going to build to a match. It's true. All this time he's spent down at the training center, maybe he's going to pull out some 450s and some uh, (laughs) cartwheel handspring elbows. It's that's what we all want to see. Let's see. What do you? What, what would you want to see? Yeah, you want to see a. Yeah, I want to see a standing uh, standing four fifty by Alex Riley. I'm calling it. If you can, if you're listening, Riley. Let's, yeah, uh, yeah, we want to see it. We want to see it. And then uh, we go to, uh, you know, travel blogger and former world champion Sami Zayn. Uh, it's like a little a selfie. separate vignette. Yeah, yeah, video shot on the street by himself. Uh, it was okay. He pretty much uh, just kind of mentioned why he was gone and how uh, just ran through who was still. Uh, you know, who was still relevant in NXT and everything like that, and how he was 13 years in the business on, uh, I think, March 1st. Yep, that's what he said. And then uh, Alex Riley in the back. Yeah, it uh, cuts back to uh, C.J. Parker and Regal in, uh, I guess, what's supposed to be Regal's office, and uh, Riley comes in and interrupts and claiming, you know, he's, he's going to be a competitor. He wants to go for, uh, he wants to go for Owens. Uh, Regal starts to say that he will let him be in the ring, but, you know, he's got his work his way up to Owens because, you know, Owens world champ. Uh, Parker then interjects back into his interview and basically calls Riley out, says he never accomplished anything, which uh, then sets up a match for, uh, I guess, next week. going to be uh, C.J. Parker and the return of the blue chipper, Alex Riley. There you go. And then we go to uh, Solomon Crowe's debut in NXT. Or no, not debut, but uh, kind of with this new push he's got going and versus Bull Dempsey. Um, people did not really seem to be getting behind uh, Solomon Crow even with the uh, chant happy NXT arena um, but he did uh, win with the he rolled out of the way of uh, Dempsey's big headbutt into his finisher it didn't really look that good uh, Dempsey was kind of far back for it to really work yeah awkward match all around um, very yeah awkward match finish was a little bit off but uh, okay yeah it was okay a- for middle of the show uh, exactly, exactly. Then we go to uh, definitely the main event, definitely stole the show, Charlotte and uh, Sasha Banks. For the NXT women's title. Uh, Sasha Banks really uh, stood out uh, here, I would say, uh, with some, you know, like, like she did a, uh, let's see, she, let's see. Sasha, uh, like, leaves. She went for her submission a lot. They really worked a lot of submissions yeah. in the match. Uh, she went uh, for what it looked like. Close uh, variations on the bank statement, leading out, you know, building up to it, uh, really old school wrestling style, doing a lot of different submissions, working the neck and back and shoulder. So when uh, late in the match, when she went for like a backstabber into the bank statement combo, like you really thought she was that that could be the finish. Um, it, great main event, even though it wasn't on one of their takeover shows, it could have been. The two they they really put on a good show. These two have worked together before, but definitely showed why these are the two top girls in NXT. And still putting uh, still putting Banks over as a champ, like letting her get a lot of offense in for sure, for against sure. the uh, physically bigger Charlotte. I think the uh, the spot I was trying to mention was uh, all the defense that she was doing with uh, where she rolled out of the way of a moonsault where Charlotte landed on her feet for Charlotte to try to pull a senton for uh, Sasha to put her knees up. I really thought that was good. This is yeah, I think this is yeah, a lot of back and forth, a lot of, a lot of multi step spots, and not just a. Uh, I'm throwing a clothesline, you're ducking. It's a, I'm throwing a clothesline, you're ducking, you're kicking, I'm ducking. Like, that kind of thing. It was pretty awesome. And then Sasha wins with the foot on the rope. So, uh, you know, the yeah, dirtiest all the reversal in the NXT game. Yeah, Sasha, Sasha wins. wins with the reversal, uh, taking taking Charlotte off the turnbuckle, and then uh, cheats to win. Yeah. So, a uh, really good finish. Yeah, it was great. And then, uh, so this this uh, show was pretty good. You know, had a solid undercard with a great main event, which is all what you want. The development of this Alex Riley Kevin Owens storyline, which is 
just as bizarre as Rhino being in NXT, but I think this is... <laughs> yeah, kind of. It's, it's the storyline no one expected or wanted. <laughs> yeah, but it's... But uh, it's something. Um, you know, again, for what... Again, if you were to just look at the lineup on this show, you might uh, easily be like, this is one I can skip, but worth watching. Um, Adam Rose, Tyler Breeze was uh, an enjoyable match. Uh, seeing Blake and Murphy develop... Uh, th- those guys are fun. Uh, Corbin in another squash match. Um, Charlotte and Sasha again. The NXT women's matches are worth watching. Yeah, hey, I know. Uh, I know the Divas matches make you want to go to the bathroom, get the popcorn, uh, see what's on another channel. Uh, not true with the NXT. Definitely worth keeping on. Uh, definitely worth watching start to finish. Because uh, in a lot of ways, you're seeing more wrestling in those matches than you're getting on the main events of other shows. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, a few other things. Maybe to bring up, maybe to mention, uh, the the chants this week were pretty weak. Uh, I remember that had been great for a two count. That's probably, I would say, the shittiest chant I've ever heard. It just needs to be mentioned. Step your game up. I, I have not. I've, I've been outspoken in the past on uh, some of these people in the NXT arena need to forget uh, chanting and get used to watching wrestling. Because um, I, I agree, the chants were awful this week. I think the main event had probably no less than seven different chants during one 10-minute match. Yeah. That's, it's, it's past ridiculous. It's, uh, it's awful. It's, distra- it's literally distracting, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not helping anybody. It's hard to learn you know, when you've got somebody that, that wants to be part of the show out there trying to get in the way. Yeah, and then to, to end on a, maybe a slightly uh, more positive note, March 25th, they announced next NXT uh, popular show. A big show. They said Finn Balor and Kevin Owens is going to be pretty much the main event. Uh, despite them building up the uh, Alex Riley and Kevin Owens show or Matt, showdown uh, sometime in the near future, they reminded us with the commercial. It's actually Finn Balor has the next uh, championship match against Kevin Owens, and uh, I believe this is going to be week of or just before WrestleMania. So uh, it should be a really good show um, with the the topped off by the main event with the. Uh, the title match with uh, Finn Balor and Kevin Owens. Yeah. Should be good. March 25th. I think, yeah, I think they're probably going to do a Sasha Banks-Charlotte rematch, I would say, and maybe Enzo Amore and uh, Blake and Murphy seem to be the other uh, the undercard that they're building to. So uh, that's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, you watch anything else other than NXT? Uh, I, every week I catch all the uh, syndicated shows. I watch uh, Superstars and Man of that. Uh, I like seeing the, the uh, less heralded guys come out and uh, yeah. have, their spot, have the uh, spotlight on them. Who would you say your favorite uh, jabroni would be? The superstar of superstars. Who's your favorite uh, like lower card talent in, in the roster right now? Uh, well, they just gave him the tag belts. Um, I'm all about uh, Cesaro and then to a lesser extent Tyson Kidd. Nice, nice. Yeah, I would. Yeah, as you hear on the uh, Peter and Jake talk about, so I'm a big fan of that tag team. Big fan of both of those guys. Uh, but I would definitely say probably. Uh, woo woo woo. <laughs> He's been popping back up recently. Oh, really? I know he's your favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's good. He's he good. won. He won this week. He, uh, nice. I think he might have built, beat the uh, heel uh, at, uh, Adam Rose this week. Where do you see this undercard talent popping up in Mania? Do you see uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro in a tag match? Do you see like maybe them a lot on that uh, Andre uh, the Giant Battle Royal? I think a three or four way tag match. Um, I think they've announced they might be in the uh, Battle Royal, but I think a three or four way tag match would be a. Uh, would be exciting with those guys. Nice, nice. Or they could just put them in against uh, against the Usos. But uh, I'm not terribly excited by that feud. Yeah. What can you do? They got to get the belt somehow. But that'll be it. Faster than the World podcast this week. A little longer than last week, about like 12, 13 minutes. But uh, we'll see you next but week. But so informative. <laughs> Keep watching NXT. Hit me up on Twitter, uh, JG Pro Wrestling, and hit the uh, pnjtwcentral.com up for all the podcasts. We got a. Uh, P, uh, Peter Talks Wrestling with uh, Peter and Jake Talk Wrestling and in the Fashion in the World podcast. Uh, Don't forget Worldwide Luchador Prime.